Excited to be doing some live streaming. It's been a little while. It's been so long, in fact, that my cameras aren't on the right setting, so I'm going to adjust a few things. If I, uh, if you lose me for a second here, I'll be right back. Let's see, I hope that worked. <laughs> I uh, had all my settings in the wrong spot, but I think it was a quick change. Just gonna appear, yep, looking good. All right, I hope everything is still coming through loud and clear. All right, so welcome to Mando Lessons Live. If you haven't been to one of these before, I'm already seeing some new names, love to see that. So it happens sometimes when I haven't been here in a while, I come back and there's new folks. So if this is your first time, let me know in the chat. If this is your 130th time, let me know in the chat. I know there's some of you out there. <laughs> But the way these work, it's an hour of Q&A. So uh, if you've got questions, throw them in the chat. No questions too simple. No question too advanced. We'll just have a good time. All right. And maybe do some instrument show and tell if people want to see that. Um, but uh, yeah, if you got a tune you want to hear, definitely uh, put it in the chat. If I can remember how it goes, I'll do my best to play it. Who do we have? We have Super Goat, Jim, Alex, Denise, Neil, Sherry, Kim, Ian, Joe, Husky, Husky Rider, Lewis, Deidre, Jima, Ron, Petter, Swampy, Swampykins, <laughs> Sheldon, Alan. I think I'm repeating myself at this point. Have Dog Will Travel. Good to see you. Coming in. Right off the bat with the super chat, really appreciate any way that folks choose to donate and help me do more live streams and lessons. I do lessons every week and live streams <laughs> once a month, it seems like now. But uh, I do, I'm, I'm done with a lot. I've been doing a lot of traveling. I was in Maine for m most of April. Uh, May got crazy. I was just in Southern California for a week. But it's good to be back and I'm going to be doing live streams a little more regularly now, which I'm excited about. Uh, and Have Dog Will Travel says, love the alternate chop chord series. Cool, yeah, those are good to think about. I'm glad people are enjoying those. All right, I'm going to catch up with the chat, but definitely keep the chat rolling. That's one of my favorite parts is trying to see if I can keep up. The more coffee I drink, the quicker the chat goes. Denise says, hi from Michigan, An anxious to see and hear the new purchases. Yeah, so maybe I'll do a little show and tell at some point. I've got... Three new instruments just off screen here uh, that I will talk about, but maybe once we uh, get more people rolling in and I catch up with the other stuff first, let's start out with some music. Uh, just a lot of folks from all over the world chiming in. Great to have you here. Yes, uh, Lewis is going to the Great Lakes Music Camp, Music Festival. Forget what it's called, but it sounds like a good time. I would love to make it out there some year. Um, how do you play potatoes on the mandolin kicking off a fiddle tune? Oh, there's lots of different ways. I have a lesson on potatoes, I think. Can't remember. <laughs> but uh, ultimately what potatoes means is it's usually four beats um, to sort of like set the tempo and give people who you're playing with, like, oh, like, a little sonic information. So, like, oh, if I go... <laughs> Tongue not included. I don't know why I did that. Uh, but just like those beats, so, you know, if you're going to play, all right, let's do, uh... Shove that pig's foot. And, you know, rather than just going... Because then everybody's like, okay, we're starting, great. Uh, Got to figure out, remember what key it's in? How fast are we going? Um, potatoes is a great way. Does it like, you know. Sets the tempo. Gives a little bit of information about the key. Uh, gives everybody a second just to, to, to figure out what's going on so everybody can come in together. Um, there's a bunch of different ways people do potatoes. You can just do simple four beats like I've been doing kind of chop style, you could just do just a big chord, you could do just a note, you could do just like rhythmic kind of muted strings, you could do more kind of 
rhythmically intricate things with your right hand. You can do a little thing with like slides. Like right there, I'm sliding from the F sharp to the G on the D string, hitting the open G string. There's a bunch of different ways. Um, so there's no kind of right or wrong, just whatever you end up doing is probably great. Great question though. That's a, a whole, I'd say just, you know, definitely explore. Awesome. First live stream from Josiah. Great to have you here. <laughs> all Mando players drink coffee? Probably not all, but maybe it's, it's part of our type. <laughs> Adele from Halifax. Good to have you here. Ron says, hope you're well. Wondering if you have a good strategy for a beginner on mandolin. Would you suggest playing chords, picking, and learning beginner songs? Uh, so I have a whole beginner series that I definitely recommend checking out. I think that, like, so watch that um, is my sort of first thing. Um, and then beyond that, really just, like, whatever's the most fun for you is going to make you play more. You know, if you'd, like, I'm not going to say, like, you should practice all your scales in all 12 keys or whatever. A, that's not going to be very useful for someone starting out on the mandolin. And B, it's not very musical. So... Whatever you can do, you know, if you learn three chords and then just start singing songs you already know, that's great. Um, if you want to learn some tunes, learn some tunes. Uh, you're sort of figuring out, that's a big part of learning to, like, be a musician is learning how to, like, become a self-guided learner. Uh, because you need to ask yourself questions like, well, what am I interested in? What is it that I want to be able to do that I, right now I don't feel like I have the skills Kind of being able to tre troubleshoot your own playing and your own learning process is a huge part of kind of the aspect. So concentrating on fun and learning, uh, figuring out what you want to learn is is kind of all there is to it. A wedding ago today, I got married. <laughs> you mean a year ago? <laughs> or what? Uh, happy anniversary. Re uh, regardless, Adele. Road to Liz Dune Varna. Can I? That's a good question. Is it that? Yeah. Uh, I, th I think I can do that. Uh, this is a slide. Often thought of as a jig, but technically a slide. Uh, in E minor. Irish tune. No, that's not is it, is it? Uh, I can't. Um... Oh, there it is. practice on the streaming but uh it's been good let's see i think i think that was Liz <laughs> road to Liz and varna please correct me if i'm wrong ian says finally got my octave congratulations question for you uh, i'm guessing the question is coming up i will answer it when i see it uncle bobby says how you feeling these days i'm feeling great I'm feeling a little tired just because it's been a lot going on i kind of you know i had two pretty quiet years and then 
uh, now I've kind of gone back to at least regular life amount of stuff all of a sudden, and it's great. I'm feeling energized, but I'm also... It felt like a bit of a marathon these days, but all in all, no complaints. Feeling good. Hope you're all feeling good. Let's see. Yakov says, you like the Oval more. Good morning from Nebraska. Uh, do I like the Oval more? I like them equally, I think. Um, the Oval Hole, so I have an F-hole mandolin. in. Same uh, Ellis. It's the one you've probably seen the most if you've watched my channel. Currently, it is in Maine. So I was going to be... So I went to Maine in April, and then I was going to go back in June and August for Maine Fiddle Camp. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to go to the June camp, but I will be there in August. So if you're interested in Maine Fiddle Camp, check out. It's going to be great in June as well. Um, Glenn Loper, good friend, great mandolin player, is going to be teaching. Um, and I think maybe some other folks too, but I'm not sure on the details there. But you can find out on MaineFiddleCamp.com, M-A-I-N-E, like the state. Um... But yeah, the, the June option fell through, but because I was going to be in Maine in April, June, and August, I just left some instruments with a friend in Maine. Um, so for the first time in <laughs> 10 years, more. I got it in 2009, so the first time in like 13 years that I'm, I'm without my trusty LS A-style F-hole mandolin. I do have the smart 10-string uh, F-hole, so I do have F-hole options. Um, but the, the, uh, the ace, the F hole mandolin is in Maine, so I'll be doing a lot with the old hole now. <laughs> That's, uh, like, normally I would have done the, the, the chop chord lessons on a F hole mandolin, because F hole mandolins are more associated with chopping, but the instrument's not here. <laughs> but this thing chops surprisingly well. something a bit like about this instrument is they're both kind of like middle ground like the f-hole mandolin just to get real mandolin nerdy for a second the f-hole ellis that i have um i find isn't like a lot of f-hole really bluegrassy mandolins have this beautiful kind of strident in a good way sound but because i don't play that much bluegrass um i don't necessarily need that sound so and that's what i like about the f-hole ellis is it's it's very percussive but it's not it's also very kind of mellow in a way. Um, and what I really like about this is, A, it feels exactly like the modern F-hole Ellis, but it also, it's got the oval hole sound, it's braced differently. Very kind of tubby in that classic old Gibson way. Um, but it's also a little versi more versatile than the classic Gibson oval holes, in my opinion, in that it's got a little bit more ability to kind of project and chop um so let's see betsy good to see you here from nashville so okay i think this is ian's octave question when i play my hand often rests on the bridge is this a problem or should i invest in an armrest uh resting on the bridge isn't a problem i would say don't plant like you'll he if you rest on the bridge and it's I interacting with the sound and you're getting you know, if it's muting, that's no good. Um, but I, I rest um, and lightly behind the bridge, like on or behind in a way that doesn't affect the sound, unless I want it to. Sometimes I want to mute. I think I have a lesson on palm muting. It's a handy thing to do, but that's not the question. Um, as long as you're not planting behind the bridge or on the bridge and because that's going to lock up your elbow and your shoulder um, and make all of the movement have to come from your wrist and your fingers. So don't lock up, but resting behind the bridge um, lightly and kind of brushing, totally fine. Um, and you can experiment with an armrest if you want. I like armrests, clearly I have them on tons of mandolins, but uh, I don't have them on any octaves, um, but they... Uh, you definitely can experiment with that if you want. Do you re recommend Eastman mandolins? I'm looking at the MD-505. I love Eastman mandolins, yeah. I haven't played all the models, but um, they're great. <laughs> yeah, I, li I like them. Um, especially if you get the opportunity to go and, and, and play it and likes the sound. 
and you like the sound. Nice, and it looks like Ron got the Eastman octave. I, I really like those Eastman octaves. Those are fun. Um, <laughs> just as, as I boil my potatoes. All right, I got to catch up with the chat here. You guys are you're doing great, and uh, at this rate, I'll, uh, I'm not going to be able to keep up. Let's see. Simeon says, just wanted to pop in, say I enjoyed the mandolin Mondays you featured in with your mandicello. I appreciate it. Yeah, maybe now's a good time. So, as Denise pointed out, I have some new instruments. One was just featured on David Benedict's awesome series, Mandolin Mondays. I was very honored to be a part of that. Um, and it was this instrument right here, which is uh, built by Lawrence Smart in Idaho. And this is a dream instrument. I got some... Uh, a handful of really kind of dream instruments from Lawrence recently and uh, they kind of they're everything that I've been thinking about for like 10 10 years probably I, I uh, finally worked with Lawrence and got a bunch of things so this is a mandocello with a high E string or you could think of it as an octave mandolin with an extra long scale and a low C string so it's C G D A that's the mandocello, and then high E. still don't really know like how to play it. it it's definitely an instrument that's going to take some time to really get comfortable on but it's built on a 16 inch archtop guitar style body it's braced for mandocello um it's not just like on a that's what i love about lawrence is he really dials things in um built kind of on the in the style of a, so lloyd lore made some archtop guitars as well as mandolins um, he kind of uh, pioneered the Archtop F-hole guitar in the 20s as well with the L5, um, which is a 16-inch body, uh, six-string guitar. Um, so it's kind of built on that. Lawrence used some beautiful wood on this thing. Um, and yeah, I'm really enjoying getting to use it. And... Yeah, rather I kind of think of this instrument as, as two-in-one. One is it's a, um, it's a mandocello, CGDA, and it's an octave mandolin um, because it's got that E. Another thing I like to do, one moment, is I can capo on, let's see, the seventh fret. And now I have an octave mandolin, G, D, A, E, with a high B. capo in the fifth fret <laughs> uh, then I have a mandola C G D A with a low F so that's my way of sort of like having a lot you know I don't I mostly play mandolin so but I love the sound of larger instruments um, but to have like a mandocello and an octave mandolin and a mandola, you know, this is my way of kind of getting a bunch of different instruments in one. And I really love what Lawrence did to put that thing together. A quick little tour of, and then I'll get back to the chat. Um, so the second instrument that I got is the least mandolin E. This is the L5, like lore style L5, also 16 inch lower bout. Um, six string guitar. So I'm going to use this a lot. 
out for backing up old time tunes and playing and singing and stuff like that. Uh, so same body shape as the 10 string mandocello, braced differently for guitar rather than being a mandocello. And finally, it's a little overwhelming to have three instruments all at once. New instruments. I never know what to pick up because I'm so excited about all of them. This is a tenor guitar, also arch top. Um, but a lot of tenor guitars historically were just big guitar bodies with a little tenor guitar four string neck on it. Um, which you know, there's only four strings, so they can't really like drive the top of the instrument as much when you're just slapping it on a guitar body because guitar bodies are braced for six strings. Um, but this thing is so scaled down a little bit. It's like 14 and a half lower about. Uh, so it's a little smaller, 23 inch scale, a little shorter. Four strings, I tune it like an octave mandolin with single courses. <laughs> So that's that's what people are talking about when they said the new instruments. <laughs> uh, I drove over to Idaho. It was like a 10-hour trip wonder, in one direction. Um, but it was totally worth it. Got to meet Lawrence. Super nice guy. Incredible builder. And I'm very honored and happy to have, have these instruments. Okay, let me get back to the Mando-specific stuff. And, I'll, of course, if you have questions about any of these instruments... I'm sure they're in the chat already, but uh, I'll catch up thing with the chat here. All right, Josh from the Mandolin and Friends Discord. Yeah, there's a couple Mandolin uh, Discord channels if you're on Discord. Definitely check them out. Um, I don't know how to search. I don't know much about Discord, but I'm in there. Uh, come say hi over on Discord if you can find us. Maybe somebody here can explain how to find them. <laughs> Jerusalem Ridge, that one, I can't, I used to know Jerusalem Ridge, it's got like five parts and I can never keep them straight and it's probably been five plus years since I tried to play it, <laughs> I'll try to work on that one for another, for next time maybe, um, <laughs> there you go, since I know every song in the living universe, well like, that's one that I definitely struggle with and there's way more tunes than I, that I don't know than tunes that I do know. Uh, question from Kevin. Working on thirds and broken thirds, open G major scale and closed A major scale, where do you go from there once I get comfortable with them? Um, oh, you can do, let's see. So I think what you're talking about is like just kind of working through thirds, kind of arpeggio, or maybe you could work on, I really like sixths, so like in G, you get G, and I, it actually ended up being tenths because of the way the mandolin's set up. Um, I'll get a mandolin, how about that? <laughs> you can do sixths, but I really like tenths. Oh, well, actually, tenths is kind of a sixth down from two octaves or a, a third up from one octave, I guess. Um, so you, you just kind of end up getting some like kind of chord melody stuff. So in G, come on. Focus me timbers. There we go. So we have G, B. Uh, we are taking that B, which is the third, and bring it up an octave. So we have G and B, A and C, B and D, C and E, or C and E, uh, D and F sharp, E and G, F sharp and A, G and B. So you get these... That's something you could work on. I find those really helpful um, for kind of chord melody stuff and 
you'll end up using a lot of that sort of stuff on uh, in your in your music. Oh, a week ago. No, okay. Well, happy one week anniversary then, Adele. <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, I was also at a wedding a week ago, and I'm also still tired, and I didn't even get married. <laughs> so <laughs> I can only imagine. Uh, waltzes. Yes, I also love waltzes, Ron. Uh, Shokin Farewell is a classic. Droid, good to have you here. Long time no see. Have you had a chance to play a Mando bass? I have never played a Mando bass. I would love to, though. Oh, yeah, Joe. Uh, Joe, uh, over on Patreon, if you're a Patreon member, Joe had a, has a beautiful, uh, website that he's working on of the pdfs of my um <laughs> of all of my tunes or not my tunes of the tunes that i have taught um they're all in the public domain except for the ones that i wrote which are few and far between um so if you're on patreon you can find that over there i don't know how to post links are hard in the youtube chat um doesn't really youtube doesn't like people posting links because it, it ends up be looking like spam um but uh, we'll figure out a way, Joe, for you to share that. Um, I've, I've got some, uh, yeah, I've got some ideas. But I don't. I think the YouTube chat will, the YouTube platform will not like it if we start posting links. But soon, I will figure out a way to to spread that beautiful website you made, wide and far, far and wide. <laughs> Yeah, you could definitely do Road to Lisdun Varna and the Butterfly as a set. Do you have a video on that 10 string? I'm, I'm probably, get, if people are interested, I could make a, a, like sort of lessons of like introducing all of the instruments that I got. I'd be happy to do that. Let me know in the chat if you would like to see those little series on the new instruments. Um, and if you just want to hear it, check out David Benedict's Mandolin Mondays. Um, I was the most recent Mandolin Monday. Was I? <laughs> was that? Yeah, that was just a couple days ago, right? I can't really remember. Yeah, yeah, that was that was just this past Monday. Um, there's a video of me playing a waltz that I wrote um, on that. Yes, yeah, CGDAE is correct. Hey Keith, good to be good to have you here. It says so long since I've been able to be here. Me too. This is as I was saying earlier, like this is the first one in like a month. Or no, I did one in the middle of May, but it's they've sort of I've been super busy, so I haven't been able to do all that many. So it's, I'm also glad to be here. Any tips on picking up fiddle after learning mandolin? I started fiddle about three months ago and have been having some trouble with it. I tried to play fiddle for a while, and not to like discourage anyone. Um, from playing fiddle I, I it ended up being kind of like physically uncomfortable for me I think after like a lifetime and I I was trying to like self-teach myself for the most part and probably had bad technique um, I would say slow and steady you know don't overdo it fiddle is a very um, physical instrument in a lot of ways that's just different from mandolin and guitar um, you know, so really pay attention to being loose and proper technique and stuff, which I do not do. Um, I don't know anything about playing fiddle anymore, really. Um, but yeah, just have fun with it and uh, get some lessons. I would say, you know, fiddle is it's definitely one of the most kind of consuming instruments. There's so much, so much going on there. Uh, do you think there's a difference between the sound of a bluegrass mandolin and Celtic mandolin? If you mean, like, the instrument specifically, you can play, like, so classic kind of Celtic or, like, Irish tradition often, often, and again, there's, like, people that break the rules or the norm, um, you'll often hear uh, Celtic music on oval hole mandolins, and you'll often hear bluegrass on F-hole mandolins. But Frank Wakefield is a good example. Played an old F4 oval hole Gibson mandolin in bluegrass, and I play a lot of Irish music on F hole mandolins, so uh, you can kind of do whatever. They have their own, you know, historical sounds, and sort of like, you know, the, the kind of warmth of the oval hole is associated more with Irish music, but 
I would say whatever you got, play whatever you want. All right. And then the, the sort of stylistically, the actual music definitely has um, different sounds. Ah, can you talk about minor keys versus Dorian? This is a great question from Neil. So, uh, Dorian is a minor key. So essentially, the way you think about it, and this is going into like kind of keys and modes, um, major, minor, things like that. There's one major key. It's the one we all know. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Um, so let's take, um, let's, let's use the key of G. So G major. And then, so that's major or Ionian. I'm not going to know the name of all of the modes. But so there's one major mode. And then when you say minor, there's a, there's a bunch of different minor modes. One of which is Dorian. Then there's Aeolian, Harmonic, Natural. There's probably some other ones that I'm forgetting. Um, but essentially, what make the, the hallmark of a minor key is a flatted third. So in the key of G, G, A, B, B is the third note in that G scale, making it B flat. G, A, B flat. So here's a minor, a minor mode. Here's another minor mode. Here's another minor mode. Actually, it's not a mode technically, but it's a minor key. Those are all like different scales that use that flat third minor scales. So Dorian is a mode, is a minor, and it is a minor key. And the way that I think about getting Dorian, and there's I have lessons on this, is thinking again about the key of G. You you start to get so Dorian I think of as like the second mode. The first mode is Ionian major G A B C D E F sharp G. And now we're gonna go to the second note of the G scale A, and we're gonna play all the same notes of the G scale. So the only sharp or flat is that F sharp. Um, and we're gonna start and stop on A. So that's A Dorian. And then if you think about it in terms of how it differs from the major scale, A major is A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A. And A Dorian is A, B, C natural, D, E, F sharp, G natural, A. So the that C is flatted from major, A major, and your G is flatted. So that's flatting the third of the scale to C, and then flatting the seventh note of the scale. So you can think of Dorian as flat three, flat seven, um, as opposed to Ionian or major. Um, and then you get your m m other minor keys from starting in different places. So if you start if you're using a G, I think, what is this? That would make it Aeolian. So if you do the same thing, the sixth note you run into, starting with G, G, A, B, C, D, E. You're gonna use all the notes of the G scale, but starting and ending on E. So, E, F sharp, G, G is that flat third, A, B, C natural is a flat six, D natural is a flat seven, and then you end on E. So flat three, flat six, flat seven is Aeolian. That's as far down the rabbit hole as I'll go, but so that's that's probably more than you wanted to know, but that's sort of how I think about minor scales. And it's a little confusing because there's a major, a, a singular major scale, uh, Maybe that's not technically correct, but when people think of like the major scale, they think of Ionian. 
Um, everybody just calls it major, A major, especially in folk music. And then minor, you have a couple options. Most common is Dorian and Aeolian. <laughs> yeah, <'cause, laughs> the ten string octave. Yes, indeed, it is a huge instrument. I definitely need to figure out how to like physically get better at it. What is the scale length on the 10 string? It is 25, I think 25 even. Uh, same thing, so 25 inches on the 10 string and the six string and 23 on the tenor guitar. And yeah, that's, that's sort of to go back into the 10 string, like, I, I'm a little, like, With mandocellos, that's sort of like classic mandocello scale length is around 25. I think Gibsons were maybe even, like the old Gibsons from the teens were maybe in, um, I think they were maybe 24. Um, but to really get like, the longer the scale length, the better that C note is going to work. And if you think about a regular six string guitar, they're often around 25 as well. Uh, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less, and they have that high E that's the same as an E string on an octave mandolin. So my thinking was like, all right, I've got I've got the mandocello, and the I know that the E works because it's the same as a regular six string guitar. So why not put it on there? You can always choose not to use it if you want straight mandocello. Yeah. <laughs> um, Sherry says, must be diff different getting used to moving one finger across that fretboard after playing ma Yeah, one's fingers, sorry. So yeah, that it definitely requires different fingering. So I use, and I, I really need, this is going to be a big pinky learning kind of workout for me as I get used to this instrument, because, you know, I mean, like, if I'm playing... there but... I feel like my fingers are kind of flying around trying to get used to that and it's a lot for my pinky to, it's more work for my pinky than I've ever experienced on any other instrument <laughs> um, so it definitely will take some getting used to Kyle says any tip on recording mandolin I'm looking for to mix some mandolin parts into my songs. So in general, and what I've got right here, like in general for recording, and maybe you know this if you've been recording, in general is like the closer, in general, kind of like getting getting a mic as close to you as possible. So for example, like maybe less than a foot away from me, I've got a microphone right off screen here, and then maybe six inches away, I've got a microphone right off the end of my pinky that you can't quite see because it's off frame um if i could tap it gently um is another microphone so in general i kind of aim mics at like kind of this part of the instrument um I, I'm, I'm no recording engineer in general like i don't know a whole lot i just know from like having my home studio for making video lessons. And that's another like kind of audio for video and audio for recording studios, like audio only is kind of very different things. I've got shotgun microphones, which really are very directional um, so that you can have them off screen and it'll still sound good and like close mic'd. Oh, let's see. Yeah, <laughs> I, I would love to make an album of just 10 string. Adele says, speaking of Jerusalem Ridge, I saw a group with Berta in the 90s. Cool. I wonder who that would have been. Cool. Uncle Bobby says, Manicello has inspired me to spend more time with the tenor guitar. Yeah, tenor guitars are super fun. So, yeah. So, Lawrence Smart, or A. Lawrence Smart. Um, I'll see if I can get his headstock in there. Um, he built that instrument. He built all, all of these instruments. Um and I originally, I'd known about him from years, four years, just being a mandolin nerd. Um, but I ended up, I found a used 10-string of his. He, he makes a lot of mandolin family instruments. 
uh, like mandolas, mandocellos, and he does a lot of 10 string stuff too. And I found this instrument is probably not in tune right now. Oh, that's not so bad. Which I think of as a 10 string mand uh, 10 string mandola. I got this used maybe two years ago now. Um, and it's a longer scale length, so it's like a 16 inch scale length, but it has CGDA like a mandola, and then it has that high E. So this instrument is an octave above the 10 string mandocello. Um, and I got that, and then I re really have, was enjoying this instrument and was like, okay, Lawrence is the guy. I'd never played any of his instruments, though I'd heard about him for years. And getting this instrument, I was like, okay, Lawrence is the guy who's really going to do a great job. And I'm sure there's other people out there, but, um, you know, he it's finding the right person for that's like building your instrument that's going to be willing to do, we like, I have a lot of weird ideas. <laughs> and Lauren, I, I realized after getting this instrument, like, Lawrence was going to be able to make all of my ideas a reality um, in a way that I was really excited about. And yes, Betsy says, Lawrence is a genius. That's exactly how I feel. He's amazing. Hey, Dan Stoon, good to have you here. Denise says, I went to South Africa for a music camp with Mike Marshall a couple years ago. He lugged his old Gibson Mandocello with him as well as his Mandola. As well as his Mando. So, I don't know, his... I mean, he may well have a Gibson Mandocello. I know his famous Mandocello is... Uh, Monteleone uh, is the builder of that. Um, beautiful F-style oval hole mandolin with kind of a enlarged scroll kind of point thing a little modern looking uh but he may have a gibson mandocello as well buck fever says what is your favorite bluegrass song Ooh, that's hard so many so many good ones i'll think about that as i try to catch up with the chat here maybe i can do something can you post links in the youtube comments you cannot no Um, yeah, yeah, YouTube doesn't, doesn't want you to post links, which kind of makes sense, because I'm sure if you could post links, everybody would just be spamming up the wazoo, or not everybody, but the spammers would be, <laughs> um, cool, people are interested in the, in little series on the new instruments, sounds great, I'm happy to do that. Yeah, cool. Nice. Yeah, 10 string, uh, Yakov says, I'm, I apologize if I'm not saying your name correctly, but um, says, I've been considering getting a 10 string mando to introduce myself to the C and also learning the mandola as a side effect. Yeah, I, I'm a big fan of 10 string instruments, clearly, because I, I've got multiple. Um, and yeah, you, the way I think about it, like, the, the shorter the scale length, so like, I think of this as mandola first because it's got the 16 inch scale length. Um, I think that the Medicello works beautifully, but as the scale length gets shorter, um, you start to run into more compromises. So the E string on this instrument is, a, is kind of at its very limit. It's a, it came with a, a 0 .009 for the E string, very thin, uh, more something you'd find on like an electric guitar where you're going to do a bunch of bends, but this thing is really high tension. I even bumped it up. I tried to go to a 10 and it wouldn't, it wouldn't hold. They were just breaking. So I went to a nine and a half, which is really getting kind of <laughs> picky there. Um, but yeah, kind of the more you, the shorter the scale length gets, the more compromises you run into. Um, so, like, with 14-inch scale, like regular mandolin, with a low string, with a low C, a lot of those low C strings are going to be really floppy um, because, or you're going to have, like, a really kind of outsized C string. So I think of this as mandola with a bonus high E string. Oh, I love the Tennessee Waltz. 
One of my favorite melodies of all time. Betsy says, miss these live streams. Me too. I wonder, yeah, I'll, I'll, so we'll do a little test. So I think Tennessee Waltz is technically copyrighted, but I'll do this as a test and see if YouTube uh, picks up on it. Tennessee Waltz, beautiful song. It's just one of the best chord progressions and melodies, and yeah, a little, little sad, really beautiful. Hard to, hard to beat that. Uh, banjo in the Hollow on mandolin, never heard that. Nope. Um, yeah, I've never heard of that tune, but I'll look it up if I can remember. <laughs> I guess, yeah, that's what I was thinking. So Adele says, if you define a uh, major key by having a major third, then Mixolydian is also a major mode. Yeah, and same with Lydian. Like, it's, it's so, <laughs> to go back into music theory land for a little bit, um, you know, I was talking about minor, if you define a minor mode as, or a minor key as having a flat third, does that mean you're defining a major third, major key as having a, a regular, like a natural third? Um, yeah, that gets tricky because then there's Mixolydian and and Lydian, which both have major thirds. But in, especially in folk music, like so, you also hear people talk about in, in like Irish music or old time music. You hear people say modal keys, <laughs> which is everything is mo well, not everything is modal, but like major is modal. But nobody calls a major tune a modal tune. <laughs> um, so yeah, you kind of have to pick your battles a little bit because people will call mixolydian tunes modal um yeah there's a little kind of like music classical music theory versus like folk music theory the way people talk about stuff gets a little confusing um and i think a lot of folk musicians would think of mixolydian as more minor than major maybe um or just call it modal but uh yeah it's, it's a it's a it's a fuzzy world there the 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 gray area between classical music theory and and f the way folk music uses those concepts yeah i think i think uh whatever i just played there tennessee waltz is copyrighted but i'm, I'm feeling a little spicy see if the youtube algorithm can pick up on it um we'll see <laughs> All right, 
I gotta, I gotta, we're running out of time here. So we're going to play a little bit of uh, the butterfly in a second, but I'm going to do a little lightning round through the rest of the chat. Apologies if I can't get to your, uh, your question. Uh, patrons, and thank you to all patrons who are here. There is a Patreon only live stream tomorrow for anyone supporting at $5 a month or more. It's not too late to sign up if that's your style. Um, and I appreciate all the super chats and you know, PayPal donations. Links in the description for anything, any way you want to support is greatly appreciated. Uh, not required. And just, yeah, a reminder to patrons that tomorrow is the patron-only live stream at 2 p.m. Eastern. All right, a little lightning round here through the end, and then we'll play a little bit of the butterfly. Oscar says, uh, any place to get a lot of tabs for mandolin? Yes. Go to mandolincafe.com. There's a, there's a tab section in there that's great. Um, they host, a, there's a great program called Tabletit. T-A-B-L-E-D-I-T. -E um, and you can find it through Mandolin Cafe. And there's a lot of like, you download the program and then you can download the files and there's thousands of files and it'll play it for you and you can speed it up and slow it down and kind of interact with it in some really nice ways. Um, oh, you know Mandolin Cafe, but maybe a place with different tabs. Um, not off the top of my head. I mean, you can find like the Fiddler's Fake Book or has a version that's the Mandolin Player's Fake Book um, and that has the Mandolin Tablature. That can be really handy too. Um, or maybe more intermediate playing. That's a good question. Maybe folks in the chat can help you out there. Feral O'Gara's on your triplet instruction video. One simple melody. Oh, would you play it? Yeah, so Feral O'Gara's once simple melody and once with triplets. Here it is. How is this going to go? <laughs> I'll see. <laughs> thinking about it too much and trying to put triplets where I don't normally and things were kind of falling apart but there's the general idea great question Denise I like that request is there a way to get a slurred note sound out of a mandolin uh there's a couple ways you can like the way I try to do it is you can use hammer-ons or slides um anything to kind of like soften that 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 attack a little bit on the second note uh you, you can't really you know you can't use a single bow stroke in the same way um but anything you can do like think about the idea like what is a slur doing it's really kind of softening that attack a little bit on the second note so anything you can do to make that happen and try to imitate that is the way to do it does your tenor banjo g string always feel and sound slack um a lot that's a common thing with tenor banjos where's my tenor banjo um what I ended up doing to solve that, so much for the lightning round, um, is, so the longer the scale length, 
on a tenor banjo, the less of that problem you're going to run into. Um, so for a long time I played long scale tenor banjos, but um, the, the trade off there is it's more of a stretch for your left hand. What I ended up doing, so one thing that's going to make it feel better is you can bump up the gain. If you have a short scale tenor banjo like this, this is like 19, this is about as short as they come. Um, the I I just use a mandola set of strings, and then you get two sets too because you only got four strings. Uh, so I use the the Daddario light gauge mandola set, um, and that's a little beefier on the G string. And what's going to help the sound the most is having uh, it's kind of instrument specific. It's having an instrument with a really heavy duty tone ring in it. So this has. Um, a tubaphone tone ring, which has just got like this, this banjo is small, but it weighs a lot. Um, and that's going to help the kind of snappiness of, of that low string um, kind of stick out. So yeah, that's my thoughts on, so yeah, with a, I don't know what the gauge is, maybe a 49 on a 19 inch scale, and then I use a 46 on a 23 inch scale, um, yeah, that's that's sort of where I go. And then if, you get, if it gets too tight, A, it's not good for the instrument, or if the string gauges get too big, not great for the instrument, and you also will start to lose some of that crispness. Um, it'll feel tighter but the sound will start to like kind of suffer and get a little clunky if you if you go too too tight. Um, another thing with tenor banjo in general is just like picking closer to the bridge, a lot closer to the bridge than you would expect to on a mandolin. All right, <laughs> more lightning round apparently. Uh, how much was the ten string mandola price wise? Not common. Um, in use as opposed to Latin countries. So yeah, these are all pretty expensive instruments. Um, I, I'm not gonna quote prices because I don't know exactly what uh, Lawrence is. I, you know, I never want to quote prices on individual builders because those things change as you know uh, the economy changes. So if you are seriously interested in um, ordering a custom instrument, definitely reach out to Lawrence. Um, but they are, yeah, they are definitely thousands of dollars for a, for a custom, custom built instruments. All right, just doing a little more lightning round here. Oscar says, I have a lot of trouble with music theory. I think it's because the names sounds more complicated than what is actually being taught or something with Latin names and stuff. Yeah, that's definitely a big hurdle on music theory. I think the thing to, to remember um, is, with especially with like folk music, you really don't like, it's kind of a steep learning curve, but you, you pretty quickly get to the point where you don't need to know anything more. You don't need to know any music theory to play folk music. Um, you just do it all by ear, and that's great. Um, same for kind of any kind of music. You don't need music theory, but it does help us communicate. It can help kind of connect some of the mental stuff. Um, if it's one, two, three, four, five, six chords, I know C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and C major. D major, etc. Yeah, I mean, just like, that's the thing is chipping, it's definitely a very cumulative thing, just like playing an instrument. So just slowly chipping away and trying to get one new concept in every once in a while is the great, is the way to do it. Uh oh, don't eat your pick there, super goat. <laughs> oh, do I know Dinkies? I can play along with it, but I, I can't pull it up in my head. Devil's Dream. Well, I'm, I'm going to. Stop, halt the request. I finally got to the end of the chat here. Um, and let's play a little bit of doo, 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 uh, The Butterfly.
So Circle of Fifths, um, essentially if you had, the way I think about the Circle of Fifths on like a folk music theory side is, um, so it's an interval is a fifth, and that's the way the mandolin is tuned, G, D, A, E. So if you had a mandolin that had infinite strings going up with fifths, it would be G, D, A, E, and then a, a B, <laughs> what is it, G, D, A, E, B, F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, D sharp, or E flat. <laughs> uh, a sharp or B flat, E sharp or F, <laughs> um, and then C, and then you're back to G. So it's a loop, and every you know, if you had the infinite mandolin or like ten string mandocello that just kept going down and kept going up, you would you would end up with the circle of fifths. And once it loops back around, you're back to the place you started. Um, yeah, a little overtime today, Lewis, I know. You all got me excited. All right, so let's play, I'll just play it on the tenor banjo here, make sure I'm in tune, but let's do a little bit of the butterfly. Well, I, can, I won't do the tenor banjo because I can't play chords on a tenor banjo. All right, let's see. The butterfly. So I'll play the melody, you play the chords, then I'll play the chords, you play the melody. We'll have a good time. One. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Here we go.
a hard tune to stop and really wants to circle back around. All right, let's get some requests in for whenever the next live stream is. What's the tune you all want to play? I'll look over my notes, but put out some suggestions on uh, on what the next one should be, and we'll, we'll make it happen. I'm just going to make sure I didn't miss anything in the chat here while you all type in your requests, and we'll pick something. Make sure I didn't miss anything. It's great uh, hanging and live streaming with you all. It's been way too long. Hope you're all well. Thanks so much for tuning in. And, oh, Devil's Dream. There's a good suggestion. Um, I'll see... Have I taught Devil's Dream? I think I must have. Uh, it's too many year, whatever it is now. Fifteen years of this, and I can't remember a single thing I've done. Um, Over the Waterfall, also good. Let's see if we've done Devil's Dream. We did Devil's Dream episode 91, Over the Waterfall. We did that one, episode 114. Um, cool. Let's do, let's do Devil's Dream. It's been a little while since episode 91. Um, just, and Over the Waterfall we did more recently. Unless there's, actually, no, I, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna change it up. Let's do, I, I'll, just cause I love this tune. Old time tune, I really want to get into the mix. It's called Phoebe Ice. P-H-O-E-B-E, -E, like the name. Ice. I-C-E was her last name. Um, a great old time tune in the key of G. Um... <laughs> It's a pretty straight ahead tune. Uh, not many people know it. Um, so it's your homework. Let's really get this tune out there, learn it, teach it to your friends, play it at jams. We'll jam on it next time there's a live stream. I think it'll be next weekend. Um, yeah, we'll have a good time. Um, Phoebe Ice. Um, there's some, there's also like, it's, it's weird. It's, it's a tune that I haven't heard very much at all, but uh, good, excellent, super good. I think, yeah, all you can, you, you all just, you know, take it slow. There, it's, it's pretty repetitive. It's in G, it's pretty friendly tune. Um, and I want more people to know it. So there's my little plug for the day for Phoebe Ice. Thank you all so much for tuning in. See you all hopefully next week. Bye-bye.